So let's um, let's get started. Uh, well, welcome on. Good morning to most of you. I, I understand most of us are on the West Coast here. Uh, some people are, of course, dialing in from East Coast and International as well. Uh, but um, but to all in one, welcome. This is um, this is the first kind of topical workshop we are hosting at Foresight. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, I think um, um, the systems group um, kind of is the is the center of gravity here. But but other faculty members at UW is also involved. Our our goal for Foresight is to do uh, kind of impactful research uh, hand in hand uh, with the industry. Uh, the center is funded by Google, Microsoft, VMware, Cisco. And, and Alibaba. And this is kind of one of the first kind of topic areas we're doing the workshop on. And we're very excited, very excited about doing this and hoping to learn from uh, all the speakers uh, that are here and uh, inform kind of our work as well. Okay, so why, why are we here? Um, so I think in one sense, like the way at least kind of I think about it, uh, we are here because how modern cloud applications are built has changed uh, dramatically over the last maybe half a dozen years. Um, you know, this was the way we used to kind of build these large scale applications where we used to have these monoliths, let's say, you know, a typical uh, application here, there's a front end, it's got some payment services, products, some user accounts and advertisements. They were all used to be bundled in one kind of complex binary. And over time, what has happened is for various reasons that monolith has been unbundled into you know, what gets called microservices today. So in many ways, these are classic service-oriented architectures as well. But the idea is that uh, if you unbundle them, you can use whatever library you want, uh, whatever language you want. You can scale them independently and their fault tolerance uh, properties and also kind of goes up. So that was kind of the thinking behind um, there. And these things really have um, really have proliferated. Like you know, if you look at you know microservices graphs at large companies, uh, they look like you know a graph of the internet. Basically, there's this internal uh, thing inside all of these companies, like Uber, Netflix, Amazon. These are kind of three graphs I'm showing here, um, and that's basically the world um, uh, we're living in. Interestingly, coming back to the topic of the network uh, of this workshop is application networks. Uh, a key thing changes um, apart from, I think, the distribution, say, like at least from a networking and distributed systems perspective. And the key difference is that what used to be a simple function call uh, between modules now becomes an RPC over the network. And for those of us who use networking and distributed systems, that has huge implications uh, to how you kind of structure the application and what requirements are on edges like these. So as soon as we started doing these things on the RPCs, a whole bunch of requirements on uh, what you want this edge to be able to do. You know, you want to be able to discover where the services are. Uh, you want to be able to do load balancing across multiple instances of a target microservice. You want your traffic to be encrypted because in some cases it may be going over the network you don't want to trust. Uh, there are issues of access control. There are issues of uh, observability. Uh, what, what is really happening across these services? And of course, you want to engineer things in a way that's fault tolerant because network communication can fail at a rate that's different uh, than, um, uh, than your function calls, so forth. So, so this was kind of like a big need as microservices are kind of taking form and, and the market in some ways, like you know, people um, are kind of colleagues in industry as well as academia, they kind of responded. And then there was like a Cambrian explosion of uh, these things called service meshes. Um, the simple way to think about service meshes is they are letting you build these application networks in software. They are providing features uh, to RPCs between these two services or more um, around the features that I was kind of talking about. And there are lots and lots of them in there. Uh, so this was the, the happy part of the story. Um, the, the somewhat uh, tricky part of the story is that uh, as these application networks exist today, uh, service meshes, there are a bunch of uh, what you could think of like fault points. Like, and you know, Kelsey, who's at Google, captures it uh, well in one of his tweets. Like, you know, so, uh, service mesh or mess rather, it's the result of spending more compute resources than your actual business logic of dynamically generating and distributing Envoy proxy configs and TLS certificates. Um, for those of you who don't know, Envoy is one of the most popular ways to build the data plane uh, of the services. And actually, like the right after this, we'll have 
uh, a chat. Uh, Tom will lead a chat with Matt Klein, who is the creator of Envoy. But it's not to blame Envoy. I think the thing has to do with the service mesh architecture itself. Or Envoy for what it does is actually great, which is why it's been successful. So it's not not so much about Envoy. This is how we are building application networks today. In there, and so so why what does this happen? Uh, this happens because. Um, the way we build these things, uh, this is the common modality in which uh, service meshes get deployed today and get used today. And like I said, it's not limited to Envoy. Linkage is also like that. And some of the other upcoming service meshes are also like that. Uh, what really happens is like you've got service one and service two and service one sends a package service two. What really ha happens is packet gets sent at the IP layer. It gets intercepted, goes up to the user space uh, to a proxy that we call sidecar in uh, service mesh terminology, then it travels across the network on this target host. It also gets intercepted and then there. The nice thing here is this blue parts let you inject the policy I was talking about earlier around encryption, around observability, access control security. So it's a very flexible way to make the service mesh do what you want to do uh, without actually services knowing S1 or S2 actually have no idea this is happening for their purposes, like S2 might actually be on the same host. And we've transparently injected all of this functionality. So that's kind of like the, the upside of this architecture. Uh, the downside is uh, what Kelsey was hinted at is, is the overhead and certain other things I was talking about. And so to just kind of put, put numbers on you know, uh, uh, that feeling, uh, these are experiments we've done uh, with some benchmark applications. The numbers here I'm showing are from this benchmark called Hotel Benchmark. Uh, and what we see here is the extra latency uh, and CPU overhead of uh, adding Envoy to the path. So the solid bars here are the base application um, latency and CPU, and shaded bars here are what the sidecar has added on top. So what you see here is that, you know, Kelsey wasn't really um, um, exaggerating. In some cases, in some configurations, the sidecar could consume 2x the latency here and almost like 2x the CPU um, and can can add uh, gets added um, to there. And by the way, this data is public and we built the tool. It's it's out there if you wanted to kind of read in more detail. Um, uh, but this is just to kind of convey what's happening. Um, so I think I'm kind of motivating this thing with performance, but it's not just about performance. I think if I if we talk to folks kind of running and building application networks in the industry. Uh, there are questions around, you know, what as the right programming abstractions uh, is the way we configure Envoy or Linkerd and other things today. Is that the right way to go about things, or can we actually do something higher layer? Um, there are questions around what is the really right security model uh, for application networks. Um, you know, there's there's an underlying assumption, at least for some of uh, some of the architectures that, like you know, importable libraries like within gRPC or Thrift or something, you know, that has a different security model than like a process that is sitting separately. Um, at the same time, uh, in in networking today, kernel via eBPF is becoming highly programmable. Uh, at the same time, I think DPUs are coming along. Not to mention kind of smart NICs and programmable switches. And when we build sidecars today, and when we do application networks today, for most part, we are unable to utilize uh, this programmability. So one of the questions is like, how can we actually um, uh, do this in there? And the reason I kind of mentioned these things, I think part of the reason is I think like the way Envoy and other things work today, uh, some of these things are really, really difficult to do in there. So we kind of look about like, what is the right way to kind of use these things? And finally, I throw out there, you know, uh, what, uh, what happens with different deployment settings? You know, if you have edge deployments versus like within a data center, what happens if your services are geo-distributed? And how do you do actually like multi-cloud as well? Um, so, so these are kind of some of the questions. Like that. The larger point is, I think uh, we're doing this workshop to kind of make sense of some of these issues that we think are important uh, to the next generation of cloud applications. So I'm, I'm very happy to say like we, we have a very kind of strong program. And at the end of the day, uh, when we come to the panel, uh, the goal would be you know, to get some idea as to what the right answers are and move uh, you know, our research and industry at large uh, towards what we think um, uh, the right answers uh, are or make sense of this uh, space in there. So that was kind of like, you know, uh, the motivation for why um, we kind of doing this workshop. Um, and now just, um, just to kind of set you, uh, most of you have probably seen this um, and say this is what the program is going to look like. I roughly divided um, the program into two parts. Uh, the morning is around like, um, 
you can almost think like uh, things that have been around and like sympathizing and understanding the problem space more detail. That's the focus of the morning. So I think Matt, Matt's here and Tom will lead a chat to get kind of history and where Envoy itself is going. Abhishek's here talking about gRPC proxy list and what they see in there. Uh, and Nitesh will talk about service router. Uh, they've been operating at, at Meta, uh, this huge uh, service mesh with their workloads. And Harry uh, will talk about uh, service meshes or Uber. So the first half of the morning are things, technologies that have been around. So kind of see where the, where the state of the world is today. And this, the second half of the day after a break uh, would be is dedicated to uh, some of the newer ideas being explored in the community. And those, I think, uh, Thomas uh, from Isovalent, which a lot of you probably know, and Sardan at Google, uh, they'll talk about uh, service meshes using Cilium and Service Weaver. Uh, so we get an idea of what the new answers there are. And we'll end um, these kind of quick 10 minute slots are uh, on research that we are doing here on what we are calling application defined networking. Uh, so I, Dan Young and Shang Feng would kind of give you a preview and the goal is to kind of, you know, uh, get everybody's feedback on what we're kind of building there. So, so keep that template kind of in your mind and we'll have, uh, we'll have a break. And then the hope with the panel uh, towards the end, this is the longest slot in the workshop. Uh, the goal is to kind of come together and we meant uh, to kind of take stock on what we learned throughout the day and have like an open discussion on where we think you know uh, what we should be building, what the problems are, what nobody's looking at, and take take us take stock of the day in there. There. So I, I hope that that makes sense to everybody. And with that, I'll kind of open the floor. Uh, just rules of the game. Um, like I said, like the the goal is here to keep it interactive, which is why the talk slots are short. So you know we are not the the whole workshop does not devolve into kind of monologue. So, so I requested the speakers to keep the talk short and if they can take questions during it, but very much mean for this uh, event to be kind of interactive. So if you can keep your videos on, ask questions on Slack, on chat, I'll, I'll be kind of moderating. Um, and with um, this there, with that, let's kind of uh, go and, and hopefully it'll be fun and we'll learn a lot during the day. <laughs>